This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Good morning. It is 427 here on our Monday morning. I'm Lauren Casey. We have several top stories to get to before we start the show this morning, starting with the very latest numbers on COVID-19 here in the state of Indiana. These are from the state health department. As of yesterday, we know there have been 29 additional deaths reported. That brings our total in the state to 813. In total, we had 634 new cases, and that brings the total new cases over 15,000. Of course, we'll continue to keep you updated on the very latest numbers from the state health department. Those come out around the noon lunch hour, so we'll update you here on the news at noon as soon as we get those new numbers from the weekend. Let's take a turn right now to another story we're following, and that is the possibilities and steps to reopen our state. We know starting this week, those non-essential dental procedures and other medical procedures that have been put on hold, those will be allowed to restart as long as there are proper precautions put in place, like using PPE. So if you've been waiting or wondering if you're going to be able to have a procedure done that you had to put off or maybe go to the dentist, that will be restarting this week. So we'll be giving you more details on that. That includes vets, that includes hospitals and dental offices. So we'll be also breaking down the possibilities of reopening and we'll get a full update from the governor coming up later today. We do want to take a turn right now to our forecast. Even though we had a little bit of rain over the weekend, Todd, no complaints. Got outside both days and I think Monday today Today is going to be a great day to start the week. It will be, Lauren. You know, we timed it out well. We had the rain come in here late Saturday. It was overnight into Sunday morning. And then once we got into uh, the afternoon hours yesterday, it was beautiful with lots of sunshine and temperatures that climbed up into the 50s and 60s. Outside right now, it's a little chilly in spots. 36 in Logansport, 38 in Lafayette, as well as Muncie. But Storm Team 6 radar, that is completely quiet as we work our way throughout the day today. Mostly sunny skies, a high temperature today that will get us up to 68 degrees and just a small chance of an isolated shower working in late in the day, but that would only be in northern locations. So take advantage of today because we do have some unsettled weather through the middle half of the week. We'll talk more about that, Lauren, for you coming up in just a little bit. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Well, we are talking about more controversy that has to do with COVID-19. We know over the weekend, I-Town Church up in Fishers opened up, but it was um, in just small groups, 10 people at a time for these quick services. And then the next group would come in. So we're going to be breaking down what this means, what people were in favor of this, why some people were opposed to them doing this. As we know, most other churches around the area are closed and just doing those online services. So we'll have more on that, plus your news, weather, and traffic. That's all starting off your Monday right here on Good Morning Indiana. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Several states taking steps to ease lockdowns. Now at 430, we're looking at the steps Indiana could take this week to ease restrictions here. The Indiana Department of Transportation is looking for workers this morning. How an event this week will help you learn about positions that are available. And a local organization is granting wishes to sick kids and it needs your help this morning. Why helping them involves just a little wiggling around. All right, we got to get a check of our forecast today. And we want to thank you for joining us on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. Todd Clausen is standing by this morning. And Todd, I am looking forward to today's forecast. You know, it's hard to start a new work week, but if we have some good weather, I think that'll make things a little better. Yeah, you know, and we are starting off with great weather here, Lauren, as we work our way throughout this Monday. It's one of the best days of the week. Friday is probably going to be the best weather day, uh, simply because it's a little bit warmer than today. But overall, you cannot complain. Temperatures right now, a little on the cool side this morning, 34 in Crawfordsville, 45 in Martinsville, Bloomington at 39 degrees, 38 is the current temperature in Muncie. Skies are mainly clear across the area, and we're just finding ourselves in the right spot once again uh, here across the area. You notice there's some rain off to our east. That's what we dealt with yesterday. There's some scattered showers off to our west, uh, but a warm front's working its way through today. And it's not out of the question, one of those spot showers off to the west could sneak in here as we work our way into the afternoon hours. And it's only going to be where that warm front is at the current time. And I think by time it gets here to central Indiana, it's mainly going to be in a northern location. So mostly sunny skies this morning, turning partly cloudy this afternoon. And then as we work our way into the afternoon hours, we'll see those temperatures climb 
climb all the way up into the mid to upper 60s, which is very seasonable for this time of year. We'll talk more about the rain chances for the remainder of the week, Lauren, coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thanks so much. We are keeping a close eye on traffic right now. Let's take a look over here on the east side, I-70 and Sherman Drive. This area is quiet other than some maintenance workers out there, and it's because both directions of I-70 are closed now on the east side. The westbound lanes closed early Friday morning, so eastbound, westbound closed between the downtown area at the north split and over to I-465 on the east side. Crews are already out there, as you can see, this morning working hard, so we'll continue to keep you updated on that project and let you know when the eastbound lanes will reopen. Those will reopen first during this month of May that's coming up. So let's take a look over on the west side right now. A little bit busier spot, I-465 and Rockville Road. You can see a few headlights there moving across your screen. Everything's traveling up to speed, though. No major issues right now on your roads to slow you down. Well, time now is 432. We are looking more, learning more about the impact of COVID-19 on Hoosier lives. Health officials report 29 additional deaths here in Indiana, bringing the total to 813. The state health department reported 634 new cases. Fifth, more than 15,000 Hoosiers have tested positive for COVID-19 since this outbreak started. We expect the latest numbers to be released around noon today. And once we get them, of course, we'll send you a push alert from the RTV6 app. The Indiana Department of Correction reports its first correctional officer death related to COVID-19. 67-year-old officer Gary Weinicke worked at the Wabash Valley Correctional Facility out in Sullivan County. The officer's last day on the job was March 29th. He had symptoms of the virus and later tested positive. A long-term care facility in Montgomery County has 14 confirmed cases of COVID-19. The county's health department was notified Saturday about the 14 cases at Ben Hur Health and Rehabilitation in Crawfordsville. A total of 26 people were tested on Friday after multiple people had fevers on Thursday. Residents who tested positive are in isolation this morning. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is promising that the next coronavirus relief legislation will help the state and local governments. As Reed ben Bynan reports, it comes as select businesses and a few states were allowed to reopen on Friday with more businesses set to follow suit this week. We will have state and local and we will have it in a very significant way. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi reiterating that Democratic lawmakers will include help for states and cities in the next COVID-19 relief bill. Those governments facing revenue shortfalls due to businesses shuttered amid the pandemic. Some of those businesses allowed to reopen Friday in states including Oklahoma, Alaska, Michigan and Georgia. Well, we've been indoors for over a month and it was just kind of nice to come out and with my husband and have like a date night so to speak. In Southern California a heat wave drove large crowds to the beach. Do your best to stay away from people but you're always going to be too close to them I guess. I mean I don't know they say six feet Maybe people are six feet. I don't know. It's here and there. The size of those crowds prompting officials in Newport Beach to weigh temporary weekend closures. More businesses in Georgia, like theaters and dine-in restaurants, will be allowed to reopen Monday. States including Colorado, Montana, Tennessee, Minnesota, and Iowa will also relax some business restrictions this week. I'm Reed Binion reporting. Well, starting today, dentists, hospitals, and veterinarians can resume elective medical procedures here in the Hoosier State. Indiana's stay-at-home order is set to expire on Friday. Governor Eric Holcomb has not said what kind of order will replace the current order. However, Governor Holcomb has indicated the Hoosier State will open in phases and not all at once. Protesters here in Indiana remain consistent with their calls for a mass release of inmates from Indiana jails and prisons. On Saturday, protesters led a procession of cars around the Indiana women's prison on the west side. They say conditions inside the facility are unsafe due to COVID-19. Protesters want inmates with less than a year left on their sentence to be released. According to the Department of Corrections, 154 inmates are in quarantine and 14 have tested positive for COVID-19 at the women's prison. We decided to start here with the first prison, uh, the women's prison. A lot of times women issues is minimized or are not spoken about. And we wanted to stand with the women pop the population to let them know that when we say free them all, we also talking about our women locked up in these prisons as well. 
Well, according to the Department of Correction, 129 staff members and 285 offenders have tested positive for COVID-19 at jails and prisons across our state. Three inmates and two staff members confirmed to have COVID-19 have died from the virus. In a statement to RTV6, IDOC says they don't have authority to grant early release of offenders. Only a court may order a sentence modification. Demonstrations are also calling on Marion County judges to release elderly people at those with under underlying conditions. RTV6 is committed to connecting Hoosiers with job opportunities and resources. It's an initiative we've been focusing on for more than a year now. But now with thousands of people filing for unemployment during this pandemic, our Hiring Hoosiers initiative is more important than ever. So if you're looking for a job right now, the Indiana Department of Transportation is holding a virtual career fair. INDOT is looking to fill more than 100 positions. It will take place on Microsoft Teams, a video conferencing app from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m this Thursday. The career fair will be a chance for people to learn more about different jobs available with NDOT. Like any company, um, we're always looking for great people to join our team. Um, we're excited about this opportunity. Obviously, everyone's had to think outside the box uh, during this coronavirus situation. So we're hoping that this is a way to kind of bring people in and um, get them working for the state. Well, some of the positions they're looking to fill include highway maintenance techs, equipment mechanics, and construction project inspectors. Right now on our website, HiringHoosiers.com, we have all the details on how you can log on for that career fair. It is 438 during the coronavirus pandemic, a local restoration company is giving back to frontline workers. The owner of Restoration One, based out of Greenfield, says they started cleaning and disinfecting vehicles for deputies with the Hancock County Sheriff's Office. They plan to finish their entire fleet of cars this week. The owner says that this is their way of saying thank you to those on the front lines. Now they want to expand their efforts to help workers in other counties as well. They're on scene first. They keep our streets safe. So we we came out with a plan to, hey, let's go in. Let's do this charity event for them, even for uh, nurses, for doctors, fire departments, police officers, let's go in, let's keep them safe. Owner Jason Pelcha says during the pandemic, they've been busy cleaning local stores, hospitals, and small businesses. The extra business has allowed them to hire people who have been laid off. He tells me they're still hiring for water damage techs and general, general cleaning staff. This morning, local organization granting wishes to kids with life-threatening illnesses needs your help. In an effort to raise money, Indiana Children's Wish Fund launched a new virtual dance challenge called Wiggle for Wishes. All you have to do is go to IndieWish.org and post your best dance moves, then challenge three friends to do the same, and then make a donation. All of the money raised stays here in Indiana as they help to grant wishes to local children. During the pandemic, the organization says they've had to cancel wish trips, but they've still been able to grant virtual shopping sprees to wish kids. Their daily life is completely interrupted every day, not just now, but every day. They're going to Riley, they're going to Peyton Manning, and they're having treatments. And a wish is something that they look forward to. It gives them hope. It gives them happiness. It brings the family together at a time where things are just not normal. Indiana Children's Wish Fund also had to postpone their largest annual fundraiser, the Republic Plain Pool that was scheduled for earlier this month. That's why they are hoping the Wiggle for Wishes Dance Challenge helps to bring in money so they can keep granting wishes. The NASCAR season opener at Daytona proved to be frightening for Indiana native Ryan Newman. Still ahead, when we could see the veteran driver back behind the wheel, Todd. And Lauren, it's all quiet right now across central Indiana, which is the good news. We'll start the day off with lots of sunshine. We may end the day with a few of those spotty showers that you see near the Kansas City area. We'll talk all about it coming up in your Storm Team 6 forecast. The time now is 440. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6. Days from 430 to 7. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. The time right now is 4.43 on your Monday. You can see a live look here at traffic. This is US 31, a little south of 116th Street. Up on the north side in Carmel area, you can see there are no delays right now. Traffic is traveling up the speed. We'll continue to keep you updated if there are any problems for your commute. 
This morning, investigators believe that an explosion and fire causing damage to a Southside car wash was caused by a natural gas leak. That fire happened Friday night at Brad's car wash. It's on South Shelby Street. The Indianapolis Fire Department released surveillance video from a nearby store. It showed the explosion. Investigators found debris up to 150 yards away all direct, in all directions. We can tell you no one was injured. Car wash employees told investigators they noticed a rotten egg smell in the building over the past few days. Well, new this morning, South Bend native and NASCAR driver Ryan Newman says he's ready to return to the racetrack. Newman suffered a head injury at the season opener at Daytona back in February. The Hoosier native spent less than 48 hours in the hospital before walking out holding hands of his daughters. NASCAR says in a statement that Newman has not been cleared yet by the series to return. NASCAR is hoping to resume its season without spectators on May 17th. Local family attractions want you to know your options. Once their gates are back open, the Children's Museum of Indianapolis is allowing people to request extending the expiration date of their memberships, although the museum is encouraging people to forego the extension and renew as normal. The Indianapolis Zoo also says its members will not lose any time according to an email. Zoo memberships will automatically be extended for the number of days the zoo is closed. We've seen tributes to the class of 2020 from all across the country, and they've been pretty impressive, but nothing quite like this. Well, Travis Floyd, a senior at Owen Valley High School in Spencer, put this video together. Travis has been accepted into the IU Jacobs School of Music this fall. If you noticed, Travis is in almost every one of those squares. Pretty impressive there, Todd, a talented musician, as you can see. All right, let's get a check of our forecast today and some good news for people as we start a new work week. Yeah, you know, we're picking up right where we left off yesterday afternoon, Lauren, with the sunshine across the area and temperatures that eventually will get back to seasonable levels. We're a little on the cool side right now with temperatures in the 30s and 40s across the area. But soon as that sun comes up, these temperatures, they will start to moderate very, very quickly across the area. 33 in Crawfordsville right now, 37 in Greenfield, 39 is the current temperature in Bloomington, Indianapolis sitting at 42 degrees. Satellite radar picture, nice and quiet all across the entire state. We're all waking to sunshine here this morning. As we expand out, you notice uh, some uh, minor differences. The rain uh, that's in Pennsylvania is the rain that we dealt with yesterday morning. What we'll keep our eye on is some of these spotty showers up near Minneapolis. There's a few more near Kansas City as they're slowly going to start to work their way in our direction as this warm front starts to make its way up uh, to the north and uh, through central Indiana. And the timing of the warm front making its way into the area is going going to be later on this afternoon, but more so this evening. So it's not until then that a few of those showers enter the forecast. Mostly sunny this morning. Quick warm up all the way up to 60 degrees already by the noon hour. And then once we get into the afternoon hours, you'll notice the clouds start to build in a little bit. But we'll go from mostly sunny uh, to partly cloudy later on today. We should be dry through the 5 o'clock hour. Let me go over to Truecast and you'll see some of the showers starting to make their way into the area this evening. By 6, 7 o'clock. It's mainly in northern locations that there'll be the chance of a quick passing shower or two. And then it's really not until the overnight hours that there could be a little more widespread action moving through parts of the area. But if you're thinking about grilling out or going for a walk with the family this evening, you're in great shape. With the exception of that spot shower to the north, temperatures will be in the 60s with partly cloudy skies. Tomorrow's the warmest day of the week as we climb up into the work week, at least, as we climb up into the low 70s. Most of the the day tomorrow is dry. So when you pull up uh, the app on your phone and you look and you see the rain, just know that the rain is going to be mainly during the evening hours. There could be a spot shower before sunrise, but again, the daylight hours tomorrow will be dry with mostly cloudy skies and those temperatures in the 70s. But Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, that's when we could have some stronger storms make their way into the area. We'll have to keep an eye on the potential, maybe a couple strong storms 
storms. Uh, as of right now, it looks nice to be some gusty winds, some heavy rain, and a little bit of lightning. That sets us up for a Wednesday that's going to feature some scattered showers. A cooler day for us on Thursday, and then we start to rebound Friday. And look at Saturday, Lauren, as we get back uh, to Saturday. Skies will be mostly sunny across the area, and temperatures, they will be climbing up into the low to mid-70s. All right, Todd, thank you so much. It is 448. Let's get a look at traffic right now. This is Tour Southwest I-465 in Man Road. You can see traffic there. Traveling up to speed, no issues to slow you down. So let's take a look in the downtown area. I-65 here, a view near St. Clair Street. Everything is moving along up to speed. Don't forget those. You're heading into the downtown area. The lanes of I-70, both eastbound and westbound, are closed from the north split over to the east side. So we do have some lane restrictions, even as you're traveling here between the splits. So keep that in mind. The Internal Revenue Service is asking thousands of employees to voluntarily return to work. The IRS says that it needs more workers on site to perform what it calls essential functions, including opening mail and processing paper returns. It's all to help get taxpayers their refunds. The IRS says it will follow social distancing guidelines and require masks. It will also get personal protective gear for workers. The agency is also offering incentive pay for returning workers. Video calling can be a great way to stay connected with work, school, and family these days, but experts say there can be too much of a good thing. Psychologists tell USA Today they're noticing what they call Zoom fatigue. It's basically a form of anxiety or stress. They point out the video can make it hard to interpret nonverbal or visual cues like facial expressions or loss of eye contact. Experts suggest taking breaks between video meetings if you can or making an old-fashioned phone call. Well, if you're driving up or driving through for dinner tonight, why not do it while you're having some fun? The spot in Greenwood that's open and ready to serve you with a summertime vibe. And the beginning stages of reopening in Indiana have already been happening across the Hoosier State. Coming up at 5 o'clock, though, how one church is already welcoming back parishioners. It's 4.50. We'll be right back. Live on CourtTV.com. Welcome back. We're Open Indy is R2B6's effort to highlight businesses that are still serving the community during this pandemic. Our Brad Brown shows us how a Greenwood restaurant is taking curbside service to a new level. For most of us, lunch and dinner are coming via drive through or drive up. The crew at Bubba's 33 in Greenwood have turned the pickup process into a party. It's been fantastic to see how our leadership has allowed us to, to really explore any option that was necessary. You know, we, no one has been concerned about cost. It has always been about safety first for our guests and for our staff. And then what is the ease for, for people coming in and out? Doug and his staff have essentially moved their restaurant's operation into the front parking lot. The setup's pretty slick. Each space gets a number. You pull up, and that basically is your table. Hey, how we doing, boss? Hey, living the dream, buddy. Wait staff take your order or radio back inside for online and call ahead. Curbside has been something that has been growing uh, long before this ever happened. Uh, and now I think it's going to be something that explodes. But uh, I think people really enjoy our food in, in this setting. Um, and we're able to still give them some interaction, you know, just six feet away. Order for yep. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one. It's a very efficient way of moving vehicles through, and even given the situation, Southsiders and beyond are turning out in some impressive numbers. They've definitely been uber involved, as you can see, and they want to make sure our people are working and taken care of. Uh, and at the same time, we're reaching back, you know, so anytime we can partner with the local area, like tonight we partnered with Franciscan Health, uh, give them 10% back of our sales. A community needs both ways. And if you do feel like cooking at home, Bubba's is selling grill packs and produce boxes for takeout as well. We want to make sure that they have everything they need in their lives. And right now, sometimes it's difficult to, to get all those things. We can be one-stop shop. We can be produce. We can be meat. We can be, you know, a little bit of uh, today's food, a little bit of tomorrow's. That Dine to Note It is a great program there at Bubba's 33. They sponsor a different organization every night. By the way, if you have drinks in mind, they have beer, wine, and cocktail mixes available to go as well. Bubba's 33 in Greenwood is at US 31 near Stop 11 Road. They also have a location on the 96th Street exit of I-69 in Fishers. Working for you, Brad Brown, RTV6. All right.
right, thank you, Brad. As we look at your next uh, seven days, today's a good day for us here. Partly cloudy skies with temperatures climbing into the mid to upper 60s. Very seasonable. Tomorrow's going to be mainly a dry day. There could be a few spot showers in the morning and storms late in the day, but the daytime hours are dry with a high of 72. Wednesday's potentially the wettest day of the week. Thursday's the coolest day of the week, but mainly dry. And then we'll start the warm up once again as we head into the weekend. In fact, Friday and Saturday looking great with temperatures eventually by Saturday climbing into the mid-70s with plenty of sunshine just as we start in the month of May. The time now is 4.57. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6. Stay with us. We're back in just a couple minutes.